to Introduction to Dataverse Security. Quickly, I want to do a great shout out to DynamicsCon. Thank you guys for having me. This is just such a great virtual event, and I am so excited to connect with people from all over the world. So who I am, I'm Kylie Kaiser. I work for Hitachi Solutions as a solution architect, and I'm a business applications MVP. I've been working with Dynamics and the Power Platform for over 10 years now, maybe 12 years now. And you can find me on my blog, Twitter, YouTube, all over the internet. Um, so I'd love to connect with you guys. Today, like I said, we're talking about security, and we're gonna kind of break that down into six areas. We're gonna start with where do I start? So what do I even do as I'm a new admin starting to learn about security? Then we're going to talk about security roles, business units, and teams. And then we're going to talk about all the other stuff, additional security, and all the other things that kind of fit into this category and you should be aware of. My goal for this presentation is to give you an overview of everything that's available for security but I know that there's a lot of stuff and we're not gonna be able to do a deep dive into everything, but I hope that you can take a few little tidbits away that you can research further and learn more about or make actionable changes in your environment right away. So first of all, where do I start? What I wanna talk about here is just some definitions about where we're even going and kind of set our foundation and then also talk about some things to think about when you're starting on this security journey. So let's start with some definitions. There's a few things that we want to make sure you know when you come into this presentation. I um, first always practice my presentations on my hubby. And when I gave this presentation the first time, we got to the end. I've been talking for 60 minutes. And he says, all right, my question is, what do you mean when you say security? <laughs> so let's start there, guys. Um, when we talk about security for this presentation, we're talking about protecting your system and the data that resides within that. And of course, we're gonna have a few other topics within that. We're gonna specifically talk about user security, which specifically means who or what person, what user can access what tables, fields, um, rows, all that fun stuff in Dataverse. And keep in mind that the, an individual's access is going to be a combination of many of the things we're talking about, including their security role, their business unit, teams they're on, and then all that extra stuff we're covering. We also are talking about security roles. And so a security role is going to be what defines the rights that they have to a specific table and any miscellaneous privileges. And those are based off of the business unit of the user, as well as the business unit of whoever owns that record, right? And when we also talk about business unit, that means where someone lives within the system. So when I configure my users, they have um, their business unit assigned, they have teams assigned, and they have roles assigned, and their business units kind of form a hierarchy and determines kind of where they, where they reside in the system. And we're going to talk a lot more about that as we go on. Also, keep in mind for those of you who have been doing dynamics for a long time, I am trying to use the new terminology such as tables, columns, and rows, but you'll see sometimes we're still hearing the old terminology of entities and fields and records. We're all working on it and we're all trying to learn, but we're going to try and stay with the new terminology. So if you guys have any questions throughout this whole presentation, make sure you're putting those in the chat feel free to call out when I say the wrong, <laughs> when I say the old terminology, that's fine. That can go in the chat as well. Uh, but I'm going to be monitoring in the chat real time to answer any of your questions. Let's talk about how to get started. So there are two situations, right? Either you're coming into this presentation as a current administrator, but maybe you need to know more about security, or maybe you're coming, starting a brand new system, right? So let's first talk about current state. So let's say you are an existing admin, or maybe you just got hired on an existing system. There's a few things that I recommend that you do right now. And that includes checking out 
what security roles people have. A great way to do that is using the security role report, which is available when you're looking at the user list. You can run report and select this um, security role report and it shows you all your people and every role that they have. It's not a pretty report, but it's a great thing to save and keep for later so you can reference and determine, you know, are there people with roles you don't want them to have or are there things you want to change? And if you ever need to come back and say, well, what did they have six months ago? You'll be able to have this report saved in an archive. You can also look for this specifically for one role in the Power Platform Admin Center. So you're going to go to your environment, setting security roles, and select a role. For example, the system administrator role, and then it will show you everybody who has that role. So you can quickly remove it from people who shouldn't have it. Um, I also encourage you to check out the business unit structure, which we're going to talk more about, but I think it's really important to kind of understand how everything is set up when you're coming into a new system or trying to get security uh, under control for this system. And you also want to specifically look for security roles that have what we call dangerous permissions. And we're going to talk about this a bit more, but basically any role that has delete access, maybe that has bulk delete access, export to Excel, these are permissions that you want to be aware of and you want to know where they reside in your system. So we want to keep an eye out for those. And I think that's a great way to bring value quickly. So if you got hired and now you're working on a system that's been in place, been running for years, uh, and you're like, how do I show my value? How do I show that I'm doing something? I think security is a great way to do it because if you go in there and find out, hey, your basic role that you're giving to all the users has access to delete your accounts, that's something that you can clean up and fix and solve a vulnerability in your system like right away. So encourage you to check that out. But let's talk about our other scenario, right? Where you're starting a brand new system and you want to make sure you set up security correctly. I want to encourage you to not set up your security the same as your organizational structure. I think we have this idea that our security, especially our business unit hierarchy, which we're going to talk about in a bit, that it should that the tree should match our organizational tree, right? And that's not necessarily true. We want to be focusing instead on the security and focusing on how simple we can keep the system, right? We want to minimize any exceptions. I think it's easy for business users to quickly want, you know, want to make everything very granular. And I encourage you to push back on that and focus on keeping it simple. Um, my friend Heidi Newhauser, I don't think she's speaking this year, but you should follow her as well. She often says to use the KISS principle, right? Keep it simple system admin. <laughs> and so we just want to remember that a lot of these security decisions can quickly cause performance or usability issues, right? The more and more complex it is, the more chance you have of having an issue, right? So you want to make sure that you're choosing the simplest solution possible. And also as you're brand new, you want to know where do I look? So you want to start in the Power Platform Admin Center, which you can access at aka.ms slash PPAC. You'll select your environment, you'll go to settings, and then you want to look at that users and permissions area. And that's where you'll find links to a lot of the things we'll talk about. And a lot of this stuff is still available in the classic interface or will redirect you to the classic interface. But all of that is slowly being transitioned over into the Power Platform Admin Center and the Maker Portal. So make sure you're starting your journey there. A few, two quick reminders while you get in here. It's very important to remember that security is cumulative. So users will always get the least restrictive combination of all of their roles, right? So if I have a user who has two different security roles, one of them gives them full access to accounts and one of them only gives them user access to accounts, they're going to get full access. So that's something to keep in mind and a great way to build layered security, which we're gonna talk about. Also, security by obscurity is not security. We have this idea that sometimes if we hide it on the form and the user can't see it, then that's secure. But it's not because they still have access. Maybe they can access it through advanced find or something else. So we want to be very careful to make sure we're actually controlling that sensitive data. All right. 
we got to pick up the pace, guys. We're going to talk about security roles. So as we said, a security role is going to define the access based on who owns the row or the record and the relationship to that owner. And I'm going to show you a picture that will illustrate this in a minute. And your role is always created in a specific business unit. And then a mirrored role of that is created in every child business unit uh, below that. And generally, I recommend that you create all your security roles in the root business unit because that those are the only roles that are solution aware and because it's just easier keeping it simple, right? There's also uh, lots of discussion around, do I use out of the box or do I use custom roles um, or how do I do it, right? You wanna be careful with a lot of the Microsoft out of the box roles because they might be giving you more access than you want your users to have, right? The out of the box salesperson role, I think has delete to some items. It has full read to some other items. Maybe that's not what you want. But if you go fully the other way and choose a custom role, then you, it's a bit difficult to find the minimum permissions that your users need. So generally what I recommend as a best practice is to take one of those out of the box roles and then remove all the permissions that they don't need, right? And you can stri strip that down to the basic access. We also usually recommend that you do a layered security as I mentioned. So you're going to take one of your roles strip it down to the very bare minimum access you want all users to have. And that's gonna be your custom base access role. And then you can create roles based on function or based on secure access and put those on top of that so the user would have multiple access. Now, let's look at a quick picture. This is what a security role looks like. And so it's about a matrix that's gonna show for each entity or table, you're going to have create, read, write, delete, append to, append, assign, and share access. And then for each of those privileges, you can choose the level. Do they have no access, user access, you know, et cetera. And we're gonna walk through the access levels next, but let's talk about the privileges. Create privilege means I can save that record for the first time. And so if you have create access, you need at least the same level of read access. You can't create something if you can't see it after you save, right? Read is going to allow you to view those records. Edit will allow you to make changes to those records. Delete, just don't give people that. We don't want people deleting things. Um, then we have append and append to, and everybody gets confused. I just give everyone both all the time because we can never figure out what they are. <laughs> um, your append means I can set up a lookup on this record and append to is the other record. So allows this record to be selected in that lookup. Um, sometimes it's easy to say append me versus append to me. That's one way to remember it. Um, I've also heard it described by a fellow MVP, Aiden Cascala, as like a USB that you, it's the first two times you do it, it's always wrong. And then the third way it works. That's, that's what happens with your append and append too. Um, assign allows you to change the owner and share allows you to share it with someone else. We're going to talk a little bit about sharing, I believe, in one of the additional information sections, but I do want to quickly say that you don't want your security to be based on sharing. If sharing is a main method of your security, we're going to have performance issues and problems in there. Those access levels that I mentioned, first we have none, which means no access to any of these records, right? User basic means records where I am the owner. Um, business unit means any rows that are in the same business unit as me. So I'm in the sales business unit. I can see all accounts owned by other salespeople, but I can't see any accounts owned by marketing, for example. Parent child business unit means I'd see my business unit and any records below that. So you might have the sales business unit with territories under it. And if I'm at the sales business unit with parent child business unit access, I could see all of the uh, territories there. And where organization means all rows for that particular table. And then of course we have these miscellaneous permissions. So you'll see these at the bottom of and most of the tabs of the security role. And these are extra permissions for other things. A lot of these are, e or all of these are either on or off. So I have access to delete audit partitions or I don't. 
Um, and this is where you'll find a lot of those dangerous permissions that I mentioned. So these are things that you want to keep an eye out for and be on the lookout to make sure you remove them from any roles that are assigned to your users. Generally, we don't want anyone to have delete access. Instead, we'd be encouraging them to use deactivate. We also don't want them to have bulk delete. Um, things like creating a quick campaign can allow them to create large numbers of activity records all in just a few clicks. That's generally scary for salespeople. Um, exporting to Excel, you might not want for your sensitive data, bulk edit, things like that. All these are things that you want to keep an eye out for. One other quick note I want to give you on security roles is around special security roles. So there are a few security roles that are required to access specific functionality. So one example is the Dynamics 365 app for Outlook user. All users need this role to be able to use the app for Outlook. So that's just something to be aware of and you should be aware of the permissions in that role as well uh, in case they are different from what you had planned to give your users. Also keep in mind that you might get a solution from a partner or an ISV and I always recommend that you review that solution and check the access that's in it, uh, especially if they're having you assign it to users. Because if it's giving more access than you're comfortable with, you need to discuss that with the ISV and have them adjust it. Um, I definitely do not want you to be changing a role that came from an ISV or a partner because then if you get a new solution from them, you're going to import it and then it messes up all your security and you don't want that, right? So make sure you're having good communication with them and just good change control and monitoring of that. So let's talk about business units. As we said, business units are your structure, but we do not want it to be the same as your organizational structure. I mean, it can be but it doesn't have to be. So don't limit yourself that way. Um, but it does determine the kind of data that can be shared. So you wanna, instead of thinking about how your organization is structured, think about how your data is shared throughout your system, right? How are people talking and what can they communicate about? And we also wanna remember that our goal of our dynamic system is to share information. So we wanna push for the least restrictive system that we can from a compliance standpoint. The other best practice I want to mention here is that only administrators should be in the root business unit. We want to create always at least one other business unit. And then if even if we only want users to all have the same access, at least create one business unit and put all your users in there. And so let's look at a quick business unit structure here. And this is just a sample to give you some ideas. Um, so let's say we created this, we have our root business unit, then we have our organization business unit, then we have our regions, and we have territories for specific salespeople, say. So let's talk about this. Where, where would we think marketing lives in this um, situation? Do they live at the organization business unit or do they work for specific regions? Are they allowed to see all the data or do we need to refine it further? Um, where, same question for our management, you know, are they looking at everyone? Do we need them only to look at specific territories or specific salespeople? And then the really weird one that I think can define a lot of this is what about your support staff, right? So let's say I have an assistant and the assistant works for Bob, but sometimes they also have to work for Sally. But sometimes maybe Helga's assistant is out and they're picking up from another region. So what does that mean for this assistant? Do they need access to everybody? Or how can we share access in a way that is sustainable long-term, right? So these are just some of the questions that I want you to think about as you are kind of drawing out this business unit structure. And of course, you know, we're talking in an ideal world, you're coming into a new system, you have time to figure out your whole structure. I know that that's not the situation for everyone. So if you are already stuck in a structure, that's not a showstopper. We just have to be aware of it and make sure we know how to work within it, right? That's also a great segue into teams, right? So a team is a group of users and they are assigned to a specific business unit and there's a default queue created for that team. Um, and there are a few different types of teams and these are going to relate to our business unit and relate to our security that we're gonna talk about in just a second. Um, I can have owner teams, so this means that my team can actually own a record, so I can have security based on the team, right? 
And you can, in that case, you can assign your security role directly to the team as well. We also have access teams, which just facilitate easier sharing. I don't recommend you use these because of my previous comment about why we don't wanna base our security on sharing. And then we have our um, Active Directory security groups and office group teams, which allow you to link your dynamic security with your office and Active Directory security. And then these, um, when a user is added to one of these groups, they're automatically added to a certain team in Dynamics, which will grant them certain rights and however we wanna do it. So <clears throat> lots of good options in there. So like we said, teams are a great way to control your security for a group. So we could have a team and we can assign security roles to that owner team so that all the members of the team have that security role access. And there's a little bit of confusion around this, and there's a new setting around how the team member privileges inherit to the team members. And there are a few options there. One is if I just have team privileges only, then I have the role as if, um, as if I am the team, right? So if, I would only have access to records owned by the team, not also records owned by me, right? But if I set that inheritance setting to direct user and team privileges, then I would have access to records owned by the team and records owned by me. So it's just an additional layer of customization in there and um, can make it a bit easier to use teams. I would encourage you to use that direct user and team privileges for any of your security roles that you're going to be assigning to teams because then it just makes it all simple, right? I don't need to assign any roles directly to the user. I can just assign them to the team. All right, so now we're coming into the second half of our presentation. We are about halfway through our time, which is great. And we're gonna cover a whole bunch of little extra things that you can keep in mind while you're doing security. Everything that we just covered is really the basics and the building blocks. And now we're gonna talk about all the little extra things that you can throw in there. Make sure if you have any questions that you're adding those in the chat and I'll be responding and following along and trying to answer them as we go. First, let's talk about field level security. Um, if the security that you've created already isn't granular enough, that's when you wanna look at field level security. So this is enabled on a column or what formerly was called a field. And then you create a field level security profile and add users and teams to that. Um, so for each column that you configure, you can configure if they can read um, update or create the data on that field. Any system administrator is automatically gonna have full access to any of these fields, but you do wanna be careful and not use this for all the fields on your form because then it's just gonna be a performance issue. Because then imagine you have a form that has 25 fields with field security on them, then every time that form loads, it's checking each of those fields and checking if you have permissions to them, and that's a lot. But this is important to think of for data such as, let's say your social security number, right? You might say, well, the uh, analyst needs it, but the salesperson doesn't. And so you might say, well, let me just put it on the analyst form. But then if a salesperson can still pull that data into advanced find, then that's still a risk, right? So if it's anything that's going to be a compliance risk or a security risk for a certain set of users to see this data, then that's when you wanna talk about your field level security or column level security. Also, we have form security. So in the example I just mentioned, we talked about maybe we have one form for our salespeople and one form for our analysts or another form for our marketing. And this is a great way to just narrow down the focus of people who are using the system, right? So my salespeople, they need to just see certain information. They don't need a whole list of fields. They just need, say, the top five fields, right? So I can have a form that just has those fields on it, and I can assign that form to the salesperson role. And so when they go to look at an account, they see those five fields. Whereas when the marketing team goes to that account, they see a marketing form with more fields. So this just helps streamline the process and we can use the security roles to guide what forms they have access to. Just keep in mind, the data would still be accessible via advanced find, right? 
or if someone was on in multiple security roles, then they could see multiple forms and they could switch between them, right? So this is great for data that we're trying to streamline for convenience, but you do want to look at the other items when you want to stream when you want to reduce for security or compliance reasons. Um, similarly, we can also configure security roles for our model driven apps. So we have uh, we could have separate model driven apps for different users in our business, and we could tailor which different tables and forms and views show up in those apps, and then we can assign users to it. Keep in mind just because we assign a security role to an app does not give the users access to everything in that app, right? So they're still gonna need access to all the underlying tables in their um, security role. And then I do wanna quickly call out business process flows because these are different. And so we gotta, we gotta call them out <laughs> so we don't forget about them. But business process flows are controlled via security role. So instead of um, like with our forms and our model driven apps from the app, we link that to a security role. But instead for business process flows, I am on the security role and I define my privileges to that business process flow. Users can have access to multiple business process flows and then the configuration order for them would determine which one is available or the users can switch them as needed. And again, users are still gonna need access to all of the tables or whatever records are being modified. They're still gonna need to have that access to be able to use the business process flow. Now we have a few other miscellaneous things we wanna talk about. Let's jump into that. We've talked a few times about sharing. So we can use sharing to share an individual row with another user, or we can use access teams to basically configure a template for how a record is shared. So it makes sharing a little bit easier. Um, you can't use this to give access to tables or columns that the user does not already have access to. So if I try and share an account with Bob, but Bob doesn't have access to accounts, he won't see anything. Or if I try to share a contact with Sally, but the contact has a social security number and Sally doesn't have access to the social security number, she would see the contact, but she would not see that field. But I do encourage you again, that sharing is not going to be an effective security strategy. There's a lot of things that are difficult to control and manage. So like, for example, when we're talking about your account and maybe your account has child contacts. So based on your cascading rules and all of this fun stuff that we're not going to get into today, uh, there are kind of hidden share records that are created for those child records. And there's no way to monitor those or make sure those get cleaned up or see how many there are. And they keep contributing to this giant table called the POA table, that principal object access table. And I think my rule is if you know and are talking about the principal object access table, you're doing something wrong because you don't want to do that because it just becomes mess. We don't want that. We want simple things. So we don't want to share. <laughs> we also have this cool thing for hierarchical security. And I think it's easier to do than it is to say. But basically, I can control security based on a hierarchy. And that can either, either be based on the manager or based on their job position. So the kind of high level idea is, let's say, um, I am as an individual contributor, I can see myself and I can edit my records and work on them, right? My manager then can see my records and any other records for people that they manage and they have access to edit those as well. And then if we go up one level, they have that next level has access to read everybody but can only edit, I think, one level down. And there's some different um, settings you can configure in there. But as you can see, as we're just talking about it, there are so many possibilities here and lots of different options that you can dig into and really customize that for your business. Uh, we also have environment security. So this is related to the Active Directory security groups um, and setting them up to have access to your system. I can configure the my environment to be linked to a specific Active Directory group 
and users have to be in that group to get access to Dynamics. And then as we talked about, we can also use the those groups and link them to teams. And so if they automatically get added to the environment and they automatically get added to the team and my team has security roles, then as you can see, that will really kind of streamline my, my setup process so there are less manual steps for my administrators to take. Lots of great options in there to really look at and um, evaluate and see what works for your organization. And then finally, we have process security. So keep in mind when you're working, building anything, your workflows, your business rules, plugins, or even flows in Power Automate, a lot of these have a scope option, right? So, and I can use that to determine which records are being impacted by this process. So, for example, maybe I only want it to be impacting uh, records for this current user or records in the business unit. I can set that up. Generally, my recommendation is to always keep this at organization and then have additional conditions in the workflow or in the plugin or whatever we're doing to narrow down the scope to just the records that you need to do. I think this is usually a little bit easier to manage and generally we have the same logic across all our business, right? We don't have different um, things happening for salespeople than for marketing. They might use the system differently, but when they create a new record, we still want the same stuff to happen, right? Also keep in mind that some of these will let you determine who uh, the process runs as, and those are also important settings that you wanna keep an eye on, right? Because that can impact who shows up as your modified on or modified by, or things like, the access that they have and making sure that users aren't doing things are are not we're not automating things for users that maybe they can't do you know lots of things in there to consider let's talk about next steps i hope that this has been a beneficial quick session for you i know that i talked fast and we covered a lot of information so i encourage you to dive into the chat and just put all your little comments in there, put all your questions, and I'll get to as many as I can. And like I said, we're gonna have live Q&A at the end, but I've provided you lots of resources in this deck. So when we get this deck posted, you can check out all of these links to, a lot of these are to different, different Microsoft docs that you can check out and review the uh, information for these settings, as well as some previous presentations, one of them from a previous Dynamics Con as well, but lots of great information in there for you to check out and you to keep learning more. As we've talked about, I think the most important thing is to do something, right? Take the time to learn what's going on in your system or plan out what's gonna happen in a system that you are working on or building, right? Take time to learn about it and just figure out what will work and be willing to ask the hard questions, to push back on leadership who might be um, asking for a lot of exceptions or asking for nitty gritty permissions things. Let's push back on that in the name of performance and in the name of simplicity and hopefully keeping you guys from going crazy when you have to edit and deal with this later. So let me quickly share my contact information. So you can reach out to me here. I'd really like it if all of you would follow me, check out my YouTube. Feel free to reach out to me with additional questions that you come up with after this. Huge shout out and thank you to DynamicsCon for allowing me to present and helping me get involved. And I really love this opportunity to present virtually for all of you and also to talk with you in the chat. So feel free to keep putting your chest questions in the chat. And I'm also going to be here live doing a little bit of Q&A in just a minute. So be putting those questions in the chat too, and we will get them answered. So thank you all for your time and thank you DynamicsCon for having me. Kylie, that was an awesome session. Thanks for all of the fantastic information. Thank you. Good morning. I think we've had some good interaction in the chat, and I think we have some good questions to talk about. And thanks, everyone, for joining us. Well, morning for us, but, you know, whatever time of day it is, we're happy that you're here and can join our 
and learn about this. So yeah, let's awesome. jump in. What questions did you see, Heidi? Okay, the first couple questions are from Darlene. She had two really good questions. Can you copy the roles, rename them, and then edit them? And I'll give you a second question because I think you can tie them together nicely. Do customized roles get affected during updates? That is so many great questions in there. And I think I gave a very short answer in the chat. So, but yes, any of the out of the box security roles or even custom roles you've created, you can copy them. So you just open them up and there's like a save as button. And you'll rem remember, you want to make sure you copy the one in the root business unit because we want to create our security roles in that root business unit so we can put them in solutions. Um, but yes, you can copy them and then you can edit that copied role, which is what I recommend you do. And then you can just remove any access that they don't need, like such as your delete access, removing that for everything, right? Now, when we talk about customized roles getting updated, any custom roles that you created or copied roles that you create and update will not get edited. Any roles that Microsoft owns, even if you have edited them, would get changed, which would be the same thing to keep in mind with anything from a partner or an ISV. If they deliver a new version of their solution that contains updates to your security role, that could get overwritten, right? So you want to be very careful when you're modifying something that's owned or, you know, managed by somebody else. But anything that you have copied and created your own version of will not get overwritten. That's a great tip. All right, we've got more questions rolling in. So let's move on. Um, you answered this one in the chat, but in case people missed it, I thought we could repeat it. So Joey asked, would the Dynamics license that a user has in Active Directory override the privileges the user is granted? This is such a great question, right? Because I think it's very confusing. So if you're confused, first of all, that's okay, because we're all confused, right? You know, we I was just rambling on for 40 minutes about all kinds of security, and I barely touched the surface, right? Because there's so much going on. Um, but when we talk about Active Directory and your licenses, your license only says that you are allowed to have access to Dynamics but does not necessarily grant any specific access, right? So grant you'll have to grant them a license and then additionally grant them a security role to determine what pieces of data that they have access to, right? Um, how this gets more complicated is when we talk about our Active Directory groups and having Active Directory teams in Dynamics. Because if I have a group in Active Directory that I create a team for, I could assign a security role to that team. And so then when people are modified and added to that group in Active Directory, they automatically get that role in Dynamics, right? So I do have some place that I can make that, um, I can make that better and make it easier to set up. Um, but just kind of from the original question, just assigning a license shouldn't be granting them access in Dynamics. Do you have anything to add to that, Heidi? Did I miss anything? You nailed it perfectly. Great answer. <laughs> All right, let's move on to Rob's question. Another great question. You've got awesome questions in this session. If your system security is set up so all users can see all records by default, is there a way to curtain or hide selected records on demand so that a record can only be seen by the owner and perhaps their assistant? Yes. So I was thinking about this one because this is an interesting question. There's a few things in here, right? We have to deal with security you have set up and also deal with people that we want to have like restricted access to. So there, I think if you don't want to change your current security, we might have a problem, right? Because if people have organization access, it doesn't matter how you reassign the record. They're still going to have... Um, they're still going to see it, right? So I think in this case, we're going to have to think about how we want to modify your security role. I think um, in thinking about this situation, kind of what I'm envisioning is like, we have our root business unit. And let's say we have an organization business unit where all your people live now. And then what I would probably create is another like business unit, we could call it special, restricted, confidential, whatever, right? This is where you're going to put maybe your VIP clients that people can't see, right? Um, 
your special team who has access to those records, they would live in this special business unit and they could probably have organization access to the records or whatever you want. Um, and then over in your main business unit, you could give them access like parent child business unit access, right? So they would just see this business unit and anything below it, right? So there's a few ways you could set it up either like two business units next to each other or hmm. one above the other where you're more your privileged clients, like they are owned by people in this higher business unit. There's a couple options there, but I think you're probably going to need to make a change on your security um, if you really want to hide that data. Because I think we probably have other options with JavaScript and things like that, where you could put a flag, like if this thing is tagged, then hide everything on this form or something like that. But then it just becomes more complicated and harder to manage. And um, and people could probably still access that data through advanced find, right? So then it becomes that security by obscurity that isn't really security and um, can cause problems there. What that, did you have that, any other ideas on how to solve that one, Heidi? Yeah, I find it so interesting that when we both kind of hear about that, we went totally different ways. I was thinking access teams might be a good fit for that. Oh, Which that's true. Access teams can spiral out of control very quickly. But yeah, that's that's interesting. I like your approach. Okay. I just I'm like access access teams are just sharing, and I'm like I hate them. I don't I even know. Want to sharing talk about is them. not caring. I know. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so. Maybe we can think more on it too. This is good. All right, let's move on to Andrew's question. Andrew's asking, is there any sort of step-by-step -step guide to setting up a client from scratch? Like a list of questions to ask and a checklist. So this I think you mean like a client a who's setting up question. security, right? Right, yeah, such a great question because there's so many facets to it and it's very difficult. So I did share a link in the chat to the Microsoft Success by Design training which I really encourage anyone to check out. It's a long training, but their section on security is especially really good, right? And so this whole thing is all about how to um, successfully set up your system and all the questions to ask while you're doing that. And the security mm -hmm. one really breaks down all of the stuff to think about. Um, and I think the big questions that I want you to ask are really around exceptions. So anytime they say, everyone can have access to this, you say, okay, like, are there exceptions? Do you agree 100% of the time? Like, I guess a good one, a good one to think about, especially is activities, because they are weird. And all your activity security is controlled the same way. So like a problem we tend to run into is someone says, okay, well, I want to put complaints. So create a complaint as a, an activity. And then they say, but I only want three users to be able to see this complaints. And then you're in a problem, right? So just anytime they ask for anything, just be asking, are there exceptions? Are you sure you agree that everyone can see it and things like that? And I really encourage you, we kind of talked about it in this presentation, but I encourage you to push back on those exceptions as well and ask, are these real? You know, is this worth the additional complexity? Right. Because I think mm -hmm. the goal we want to work towards is as much sharing, not not sharing records, as much open access um, to data as we can. Right. Because we want that to be our goal. We want to grant people. We want people to be able to see data and collaborate on data. So we really want to get it as easy as can be, right? Mm -hmm. And you want to keep it easy for you to maintain later too. Absolutely. Um, so we've had four more questions come in while we've been talking. Ooh, so great. Jonathan is asking, which XRM toolbox tools do you recommend to work with security roles? That's a good question. Um, there's a couple of them. Usually we're in, and with any of the security, I start with that security role report, which is not XRM toolbox. That's just in dynamics, right? Um, and then there's a couple tools in, well, if we're being honest, I don't use XRM Toolbox to manage my security that much um, because I have been doing it for a while, right? So I do it in the, um, just in the maker portal or in the regular customizations area. Cause you can also create advanced fine based on your security roles, which I find really helpful or being able to go um, in now in the maker portal and go to a specific role and see who's assigned to it. Like I find that really helpful. Um, there are XRM toolbox tools whose names are eluding me right now, um, but you can check like 
put in a person and see what access they actually have com combining all their security roles. So that's great for troubleshooting. Um, and there's a few other security role tools in there that I have looked at, but I haven't spent too much time on. What about you, Heidi? Do you use any of those tools? I don't. Same with you. I just go directly into the system. We have three minutes left. So I'm three gonna try, let's okay. try to get these last three out. Yeah. All right, Santosh, my org has a lot of sales regions. Each user should be able to access only the data related to their region. What should I use for regions and dataverse, business units or teams? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I think because we only want people to access the data in their region, I think it's going to be simpler for you to do that with a business unit um, because you probably still want people to own their own records, right? So you want to know that Joe were Joe in your West region, say you have Joe and Sally and they, but we need to know who owns which one. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think you would want a West region business unit and then your owners within that. And then your security could be set up to access business unit records. Or if you need to break it down more, you could do West and then your separate business units for each person. Um, what you really need to think about in that situation is your assistance, right? Cause that's where you run into problems. So do you have assistants who can access the whole region or do they have to be narrowed down to only access one sales rep? But then what happens when another is um, assistance out sick? Like then do, do we have to share access? So those are the questions you really need to think about and dive, dive into a bit more and make sure you're not missing any of the scenarios in there. Right. Yep. Completely agree with that one. Um, so Michelle's asking for clarification. If you edit a security role in the root org, do those changes roll down to the same security role in the business unit? Yeah, great question. Because again, it's a little bit confusing, especially when you're just learning this, right? But yes, any change you make to that parent security role, it affects all the same roles um, all the way down the chain, so. Awesome, two minutes left. Paul's asking, can I give permissions for some records just for one team? Yes. Um, and we'd have to do, I think this is probably your access teams, again, might be a good oh, option yes. to use or sharing with the team. I think what you'll have to figure out there is those records have to would have to be owned by someone in a different business unit, right? That the rest of your users don't have access to. And so they'd still have to be owned. Maybe you could have them owned by a, you know, confidential user, whatever you want to call it, who lives somewhere else. And then uh, you could share those records with um, with whoever needs access. Mm -hmm. Just I will warn you to be careful if this is a very um, if this is happening a lot. Right. If you have a lot of uh, records that this is going to fall into this scenario, then I really encourage you to push back and make sure that this is going to be effective because we don't want to be sharing everything, right? Absolutely. I think we did it, Kylie. You answered every question. You did a phenomenal job teaching us about security and dataverse. Everybody's excited. Everyone can't wait to get back to their systems and dive in and apply these cool new tools and tips. So thank you yeah. so much, Kylie. That was great. Thank you, Heidi. Thanks for being here. And thank you, everyone, for coming out and handling our or asking our questions and being active in the chat. We really appreciate it. And we have loved having you here. I encourage all of you to connect with me, you know, watch my blog. I'll post the um, deck there at some point. And also, I shared earlier in the chat, Heidi and I just did a podcast for CRM Rocks where we talked about security horror stories. So if you want to hear more about security, go check that out. Um, yeah, and stick around for more great sessions today. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.